Good morning, Barry. <laughs> Good morning, everybody else, too. And so, it's, I, y'all, y'all just, I don't know. I'm, I'm ready to go now. I'm ready just to, to let, I can just get the band up here and just do all those again, and I think I'd be good. I think that's all I need to hear. But I want to welcome you here to the lake if you're here for the very first time. We're excited that you're spending your Sunday with us. If it is your first time when you came in, hopefully they handed you a card. At the bottom of that's what we call it, a connection card. If you get a chance, that you can fill that out. And stop by our resource center just to let us know that you were here for the first time. And we'll give you a gift just to say thank you for spending your morning here with us here at the lake. We're in a, a series that we call What Would Jesus Undo? And if this is your first time with us, you're probably thinking, wow, that's, that's different. That's not, I'm not, because if you're like many of us, we remember the WWJD movement, the What Would Jesus Do movement with the bracelets and all that stuff. But what we're looking doing with this series right now is we're looking at the life of Christians. We're looking at the life of Christians and trying to determine, is there something in our life, is there something that we do in our life that would displease Jesus, that would grieve, that would grieve his heart? And what would Jesus undo in us? What would he undo in us to help us live a life that's better, a better life, or the life that God has designed for us, that God desires for us? What would he undo in our lives? Uh, in, in week one, in week one, we looked at the spiritual indifference that Jesus would undo because it's in believers. They would, he would see this in believers who no longer really care for anybody. They're just, they, they just don't have any passion for anybody. They're not hot. They're not cold. They've got a lukewarm spirit that they just really don't care at all about any other people. And Jesus would undo this lukewarm spirit in us if, if we would trust God and have faith in God each day, not once a week, not once a month, or just when the tragedy happens, but to have faith in God each day, to trust him with something that we could not handle, that we just quit trying to handle and allow God to do that, Jesus would undo this spiritual indifference in us. Last week, we looked at the hollow worship. We looked at hollow worship in, in believers, believers who just go through the motions, who just play the part, play the game, act the part, whatever you want to call it. They're just going through this, but they're empty on the inside, and when they try to worship God, they're worshiping him in vain. And I, just, I, I don't know, I just got to say, something about last week was special. If you were here last week, I hope you'd agree with me that it was really special to be up here and share how we can worship God in a way that pleases Him and have the stage with, share the stage with other worship leaders at the same time and build that energy. And we learned that worship not is not just about the songs that we sing, but it's about the life that we live, and we live it every day. And if you were here last week, I was wondering, do you remember the, remember the scripture that I focused on last week? It was in Matthew chapter 17, and Jesus was having a discussion, a conversation with the teachers of the law and the Pharisees, and uh, he was telling them about, he was calling them out, really, that they're living their life this way, that they put on this show this way, but their life was really empty, and they're worshiping God in vain. And he got to this part in his conversation and just fussing at them for the life that they're pretending to live. He gets in verse 7, in Matthew 17, verse 7, we went over this last week, he says, you hypocrites. That just resonated when I, when I read that last week, and when I read it again this week, looking at it, you hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. These people, these hypocrites, honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And I've looked at that over and over this week. And I, I, the, the, these people, they, they claim one thing, but then they live another way. And I believe that Jesus, that he would undo in a believer this behavior this attitude, uh, this lifestyle of saying one thing and then do, doing something else because I, it, he despised that. He despised it with his whole heart. He despised hypocrisy, that whole idea of hypocrisy, people who claim one thing, people who claim one thing but then live another way. So we looked at spiritual indifference. We looked at the hollow worship. They want to look at hypocrisy. Hypocrisy, And it's really kind of difficult to talk about hypocrisy in church because it's hard for people in church to recognize it. It's hard for us to see it in our lives. It's a whole lot easier to see it in someone else's life, right? I mean, how many people would say, raise your hand, don't look around, but raise your hand and say, I know a hypocrite. <laughs> well, many of you didn't raise your hand, so I know a lot of hypocrites. Uh, <laughs> 
you know, we know we know these hypocrites. They say one thing and they do something else. I mean, and one of the, one of the most common reasons, one of the most common reasons people don't like Christians, and one of the most common reasons people don't attend the church, is because they're all full of hypocrites. hypocrites. I'm not going to that church. They're all hypocrites. I'm not going over there. They're all hypocrites. And we'll, we'll laugh about it. We'll hear preachers talk about it. We'll laugh about it. But I'm, I'm afraid that when we laugh about it, we actually ignore the real pain it causes. Because this hypocrisy causes pain. People have experienced uh, the, the, the hurt and, and the pain of being disappointed by the behaviors and the attitudes and the actions of those who, who claim they follow Jesus. They talk the talk but they don't walk the walk. And they've been hurt by that. It might have been a pastor in a church. It might have been a Sunday school teacher as you grew up. It might have been some ministry leader in the church. It could have been your mom or your dad. You know, when you go to church with your mom and dad and at church, they're this type of person. And then when they get home, there's somebody else. You know, you, you, you meet some of your friends at work at church and they're one type of person. And when you meet them at work, there's somebody else. And you, you go to go, you show up at school, and the, the, the student you saw yesterday is not the student you see today. The person you saw at church is not the person you recognize out in the public. The uh, theologian and author, his name is Brendan Manning. I read his book, The Ragamuffin Gospel. And uh, he said this about hypocrisy He said, The single greatest cause of atheism in the world today. The single greatest cause of atheism in the world today is Christians who acknowledge Jesus with their lips, they honor me with their lips, and walk out the door and deny him with their lifestyle, but their hearts are far from him. See, some people see hypocrisy in the life of a Christian, and they walk away from the church. Sometimes they see hypocrisy in the life of a Christian, and they walk away from God. So what is hypocrisy? Can we give it a, a definition that we understand it? it? It's the definition. Hypocrisy is the difference between what we say and how we live. It's the difference between our public persona, what people see, what they perceive, and our private character, who we really are. There's a difference. And when there's a difference between what people see and who we really are, that's hypocrisy. And whenever Jesus spoke against hypocrisy, he used a Greek word. He, he, the Greek word was hypocrites. Even looks like hypocrite. Hypocrites. It means an actor or, or a stage player, one who wears a mask, pretending to be somebody that they're not. I'm sure you're familiar with uh, Greek theater. <laughs> you know, this is called um, tragedy. I call it the angry hypocrite. <laughs> that angry Christian that tells you what you don't do. No, don't do that. Don't. Don't go there. Don't drink. Don't smoke. Don't date him. Don't date her. God's going to punish you. And then they take off the mask and they do the very things they warn people about to not do. They, they're one person on the outside, but on the inside, there's somebody else. And, and then there's, then there's the, the happy hypocrite. <laughs> the happy Christian. The one that meets you and says, hey, so glad to see you at church today. It's a great day to be in the house of the Lord. All the time that morning, they've been in an argument with their wife all the way to church. <laughs> or they've been in a war with their kids all morning long. Man, it's so good to have you in church today. Are you ready to get your worship on? <laughs> what is she wearing? Are they? No, they're not sitting in my seat. No, they're not. <laughs> See, on the outside, we show one thing, but on the inside, we may show something else. 
just had fun with the mask. I've had a journey trying to find these things. I thought everybody had them. <laughs> Obviously they don't, but uh, the, the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul addressed this. He wrote a letter to a, a young pastor named Titus, and he, he, gave, he gave a one-verse definition of hypocrisy, and I thought it works really way, good for today. It's in Titus chapter 1, verse 16. They claim to know God. They say it. They know God, and they act the part. They go to church. They attend. They be a part. They participate. But by their actions, by the way they live their life, they deny him. They honor me with their lips, but they deny their, their, their heart is far from him. Jesus defines it this way. He said, anytime that you're giving to be seen, when you're giving to be seen, when, hey, I'm being generous here, and you need to know how generous I am. I'm giving this much. I'm giving this much. Jesus says that's hypocrisy. Anytime, anytime that you pray to be heard, he said this because the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, these hypocrites, would stand on the corners, and they would pray as loud as they could so that people could hear them praying and see and listen to how holy and how special they were to God. Jesus said that's hypocrisy. When you were fasting to be noticed, when they would, when they'd pour all these ashes and dirt on them and wear tattered clothes and say, I'm just, I've gone week without food and I want you to know how holy and, and sacred I am in my relationship with that's hypocrisy. Just to get noticed. Jesus said it's hypocrisy when we criticize someone for what they do and then we do the same thing. Jesus said a lot of things about hypocrisy. Jesus never spoke more harshly than he did when people wore the mask of hypocrisy. He would get in people's cases, yes, and straighten them out and share about what they should be doing, but he never spoke more harshly than he did about people wearing a mask of hypocrisy. In Matthew chapter 23, in a lot of different translations, you can find this chapter in your, in your Bible, and it'll have a title. A part of the way through it will have a title. And the one I saw in my Bible says, The Seven Woes. The Seven Woes. These are the woes that Jesus issued to the teachers of the law, the Pharisees, hypocrites. These are the ones he, and I just, I just, I didn't want to look at all seven, but I wanted to look at one just to give us an idea of what Jesus says to hypocrisy. In verse 27, chapter, Matthew chapter 23 and verse 27, Jesus says this, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites, you play actors. You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside, you're full of bones of the dead and anything unclean. And last week, we talked a little bit about unclean. If you touched anything unclean, then you were unclean and you were contagious and people avoided you. In the same way, on the outside, you appear to people as righteous. You put on a mask and you appear righteous to these people. But on the inside, you're full of hypocrisy and wickedness. See, the Pharisees wanted the illusion. They wanted this illusion of public virtue. But inwardly, they were full of private vices. So you look at these seven woes and this woe to you, woe to you, woe to you, woe to you. Seven times Jesus issues a woe to these hypocrites. And then when he finishes his little tirade, his woe, he gets in verse 33 and he says this. You snakes, you brood of vipers, it means you're poisonous in the way that you're living your life as an example for all these other people. How will you escape being condemned to hell. I had to read that twice this week. Is, is Jesus saying hypocrites go to hell? I mean, that, that just sounds, to me, that just sounds unreasonable. Why, why would he say that? But there's another place in the Bible, in the scriptures, where people come to, well, Jesus said people are going to say this one. They say, Lord, Lord, didn't we do this in your name? Lord, Lord, didn't we play the part? Lord, Lord, didn't we tell people that we know you? Lord, Lord, 
didn't we? And he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. You put on a show, but I never met you. See, hypocrites think they look good on the outside, but on the inside they're far from God. And I want, I want you to notice something. Jesus did not say, wow, he said that all hypocrites. No, no, I want you to understand. Jesus did not say, woe to you who say bad words. Should have been a sigh of relief right there. <laughs> woe, he did, he did not say. He did not say, woe to you who watch bad movies. Not B movies and C. I'm talking about R-rated and adult movies in the theater or on Netflix or Cinemax. He didn't say that. He didn't say, woe to you who do bad things. What he said was, woe to you who do wrong but act like you don't. Woe to you who wear a mask, pretending to be someone you're not. Now, we know that church is not the only place for hypocrites. We know hypocrisy is not limited to the church. Right now, what they're saying, the, 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 the breeding ground right now, the, the, the latest breeding ground for hypocrisy is social media, Facebook, <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah, you can look at it and say, wow, I know this person. That's not them. That, I know this person. That's not them. It's, it's this place where people can go and show what they want other people to see. Not what they really are, but show what they want people to see. Uh, we see it all the time. Here's, here's, here's my perfect marriage. My, my spouse is a gift from God. Here's a picture of us, lovey-dovey. And everybody's buying into that. And in reality, they don't even sleep in the same bed together. <laughs> and we know these people. There's a, there's a picture. I think I got it. There's a picture. Yeah, there we go. If someone puts a picture of their daily devotional, they're going to have their daily devotional. They got their cup of coffee because we know it's not a godly daily devotional unless there's a cup of coffee in there, right? It's got to be a cup of coffee. Here's, here's my coffee. Here's my Bible. Here's my journal. I'm not telling you how long it took. I'm not telling you that it took me longer to get this picture just right than I did in my Bible study. I'm not telling you that. I'm just showing you what I want you to see. That I did a devotional. But it took me all afternoon to get that picture just Right. And before, it, I know some of you said this thing, before, before you start planning on how you're going to share the link of this message with that specific hypocrite that you know, man, you should have been there Sunday. This was all about you. You need to listen to this. I'm going to send you, you know, before you plan to do that, because I know that's going to happen, uh, let me just say this. When what we show, when what we show, on the outside is so different than who we are, Jesus says, woe to you hypocrites. How will you escape being condemned to hell? And I don't know about you, but if you're like me, when, I, when you read that, you hear that Jesus said that, if, if you're a little uncomfortable right now, because maybe you're recognizing that there's some inconsistencies in your life that may re that just may resemble hypocrisy. That you may have told people this and then you went and did that. And you're feeling a little uncomfortable right now. That's a good thing. Because if you're feeling uncomfortable, that means you recognize that something needs to change. I didn't like hearing Jesus say that. I think there's maybe, and maybe there's something, and, and if you feel a little uncomfortable and you realize that something needs to change, then that's a good thing. Because you're, maybe your mind is trying to tell your heart, no, that you need to look for some answers here because we're not living things on the same page here. And if you're uncomfortable, that means you're open to what God will show you to help you. And this is what I want you to see. There is hope for the hypocrite in all of us. There's hope. I need to know this. If I'd have stopped with what Jesus said to the hypocrites that they would be condemned to hell, 
But I need to know this. We all need to know this because we all fall short. None of us are perfect. We admit that where there's no one perfect. No, not one. We all fall short. We all mess up. We all make mistakes. We all have these battles, these secret battles in our life. We all have struggles in our life. We may cover them up with a mask, but they're real. We have these struggles inside. We're all afraid of things. We all doubt God at times. We're all inconsistent in who we say we are and how we live because we're all sinners in the eyes of God. But let, let, me show you, let me show you this. In the same chapter, Matthew 23, 23, right in the middle of the seven woes that Jesus caps off by being condemned to hell, right in the middle, he says this in verse 25. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. See, that's another one of those seven woes. It's a pow, 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 You clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. You're wearing a mask. You're putting on a show. You're saying one thing, and you're living another. Blind Pharisee. It's the only time he says that. Why? You don't see it. Pharisee, of all people, and you don't see it. Of all people, you don't understand. I can undo your hypocrisy. I can undo this. Look what he says. First, clean the inside of the cup and the dish. And then the outside also will be clean. Not clean the inside of the cup and then clean the outside. No, just clean the inside and the outside will be clean. Don't, don't put all your energy and all your effort on the outside to hide who you are, who you truly are. First, let, let the Spirit of God, let the Spirit of God do a work internally where no one sees it. Deep inside your heart, recognize in your heart how much God loves you. Recognize in your heart that God sent His Son to earth for you. Hypocrites. To die for you, for all your mistakes, every time you messed up, for every battle, for every struggle, for every inconsistency in your life, Jesus took that upon him and died on a cross for you. Laid him in grave three days for you. And his Father in heaven, God Almighty, raised him back to life to prove his love for us. If you'd believe that and accept that, then Jesus would begin to undo in you the hypocrisy that you've created inside of you. And you would you begin to, and once you recognize and accept what God has done, Jesus starts this work. And as the Spirit of God is working in you, conforming you to the image of His Son, the Word of God is transforming you because you're reading and understanding what God's plan is for your life and what God wants to do through you and how God has used people just like you. Hypocrites just like you to make a difference in this world. And as he's working on this, he's transforming you. And out of the overflow of ho who you are becoming, you can begin to display the goodness of God as a reflection of his work on the inside and no longer wearing a mask on the outside to pretend to be somebody else that you're not. I know that's a lot to take in. And if you can only remember, just remember one thing today. As you leave, you just remember but one thing that I, I want you to remember this. Jesus has zero tolerance for hypocrisy. Can't stand it. He despises it. He never talked harshly about anything else as he did hypocrisy. It breaks his heart. But he has unlimited grace for a sinner in need of forgiveness. Unlimited grace. See, Jesus didn't come, come to earth to, to, for those who appear to be righteous. He didn't come to those who look like they're healthy. He came for those who knew they were sick on the inside. Sinners. Like me. And like you. Jesus has zero tolerance. 
for the pot. But he had a limited grace for a sinner. He needed forgiveness and a savior. Proverbs 28, 13 tells us this. People who conceal their sins, people who live behind a mask, will not prosper. That means they will not experience the blessings of God. That's what's missing in their life, the blessings of God. But if they confess and turn from them, if they turn from their sin, if they drop the mask, get rid of the mask, they will receive mercy. Dropping the mask means that we kneel before God and we say, forgive me. Rescue me. Save me. Heal me. Change my life. And God's answer will always be yes. Always. The one who asks for help finds mercy. So are we tired of the mask yet? Are we tired of wearing the mask? Being somebody that we're not? Are we aware that a change needs to take place in our life so that we can live a life? Live the life we say we believe. We believe in Jesus Christ as our life shows that. Instead of trying to fool people all the time by being somebody that we're not. There's hope for the hypocrite in all. The hope has a name. It's Jesus. So let him take the mask away. He will undo the hypocrisy and receive his mercy and receive his forgiveness and receive a brand new life. Let's pray. God, life is such a struggle, and we deal with so many things. And I, 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 I've, I've prayed with so many different people here at the church, and I've, I've listened to their stories and their struggles, and it's real. People talk about their struggles, but it, it's real. But when they walk in, you can't tell it. But I know when they do take the mask away, You've used so many other people to reach out to them, to love them, to show your love to them. But it's so easy to keep the mask on because if I keep the mask on, then nobody really knows what's going on in my life. Let me just tell you this. As long as you keep that mask on, you're never going to experience the blessings of God. And experiencing the blessings of God is a whole nother life. imagine. You can't imagine how amazing that life would be. So God, today, live in the hearts of all us hypocrites to remove the mask. To come out of hiding and to come to you. Your promise. You will clean us from the inside out. God, today I want to believe that. I want to accept that. So today I want to I want to turn over my mask. I'll turn that over to you, God. Do with it what you will, destroy it, burn it, whatever you want to do with it. God, I don't want to go back there. I don't want to go back to that life, even though it keeps calling me back. I don't want to go there. Could you just remove that from me today? Could you just heal me of that today? Could you just rescue me from that today? God, would you just save me from that today? And like I said earlier, the answer is always yes. Because you're a child of God. This is what Jesus was going to do in the life of the believer. Take away that pot. So this morning, as you're worshiping God, as you're singing in your heart, Just come to the altar. We have a stage, but come into his presence and realize 
to understand. Oh, what a Savior we have. He gave it all for us. Isn't He wonderful? Isn't He amazing? He's always right there. Many of us know that's true. But as you come to the altar, as you come before God and present your prayers and your mask, you're never alone. You are never alone. God, we thank you. We praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.